we are covering the uh, area of temporary state work about disease, like sea, Adriatic, Baltic Sea. And here in France, we have the contemporary of the largest of Shima. all the temporary contemporary in all this area. So, so this is the. Okay, can anyone hear me in this bubble? Gabriella, we I can I can hear you, yes. Great. We can't see you, which is not it's not we don't have to see you, Just which is fine, but just so you know. Uh, yeah, good. Okay. And and we are waiting for others who there are 10 more people here, but it'd be nice if you guys can put yourself on the screen, which means you share your audio video so we can see who's there. I see Kasha, uh, Katarzyna Jancelewicz is there, um, a few others. It'd be great to make it more interactive so we kind of know who is there. Um, put yourself on the screen. It means top right of the screen. Exactly. Leave you. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Great. And apparently we're waiting for Pavel Mlechko to get on, having a bit of a tech issue, but that'll get fixed in a minute. Um, and Sarunas from Vilnius, from Sitco, should also be on. Sarunas, are you there? I guess you're not. But um, why would let's do this as an intro, Gabriella? Why don't we ask you to give us a little bit of a while we're waiting for Pavel to jump on? Give us a little intro of of who you are, what you're doing, your your SSE. Um, I know you, but not everyone does. Give us a one minute Hi. intro. Can you can you see me? Yes. So I have a little bit of uh, red hair right now. Um, don't don't worry, I have no hair, so I'm, <laughs> no sympathy from good. me. Well, that's a good that's a good connection, right? I did my exercise like recently. So uh, my name is Gabriela Staniakova, and I'm leading Kimberly Clark uh, Shared Service Center in Krakow. And uh, a part of uh, Kimberly Clark uh, Center in Krakow, uh, my organization is actually spread across EMEA. So I have people sitting in the different traditional countries, also, you know, in uh, Middle East Africa, people sitting in Nigeria, in uh, um, uh, Kenya, in Bahrain, in Saudi. I have larger, larger organization, 30 people sitting in Russia as well. And uh, then we are now in the middle of transitioning Israeli operations to GBS as well. So, you know, with that one, we will be uh, the... Uh, we will have like a unique uh, uh, unique position compared to other shared services for Kimberly Clark across the globe that will be managing entire region with support of GBS. And then uh, um, uh, a part, uh, in terms of the services that we are responsible for, 
we are uh, looking after traditional GPS type of services like uh, procure to pay, uh, uh, record to report, like a finance organization, OTC as well. Then we have uh, internal control in the, the center. Uh, we also have uh, DTS organization, Digital Technology Center in the center in Krakow. And a part of uh, uh, traditional GPS, we also have uh, <clears throat> something which is not so uh, obvious. Uh, when you think about the treasury operation, for example, you would say treasury operation is uh, a traditional type of work, but we at Kimberica, we have our own bank. So we have in-house bank operations that we manage globally as well. And then uh, we are starting to explore and expand a little bit of responsibility within the uh, touching R&D scope as well, which is something new that we, we are building up uh, in the center, small team still, but uh, we will see. Yeah, and that uh, I would say, you know, would summarize the, the, the scope of 530 people we currently have in uh, Krakow. So Gabi, let me ask you quickly, are you, does that mean you guys are doing kind of cash management, treasury management out of Krakow? We do treasury operations, yes, and in-house bank cash, yeah. We are moving yeah, cash uh, uh, around the globe, yes. Well, that's, I think that's not very typical for many SSEs in the region. No. Um, I know that uh, Corning in Budapest uh, has major um, treasury operations, but that's the first I'd heard of it. Now you're the second. So I think it, it, it is pretty rare, I think, in the stage. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Liviu, how about intro, please? Uh, nice to meet you guys. Uh, I think this is one of the first times I'm joining these types of events, and uh, I'm really happy to be here. Um, well, we are uh, what I would call a small shop, but we started up in, in Bucharest, and, uh, and then expanded with a couple of other offices uh, at the seaside in Constanza and one in. Uh, which company, by the way, Livio? Which which company? Uh, name of the company is Tmart. Uh, like to believe that our uh, colleagues are happy enough joining the company, hence we named the company TMR. Um, so what we do is uh, provide development services um, out of these three offices for now, and we are uh, planning to expand to our company. Um, currently, our focus and uh, the development effort is being uh, ramped up significantly in Bolivia uh, and Chisinau. Hmm. We're we, we really happy to, to, to have done that move. Uh, it provides for a unified um, time zone uh, based off of uh, Eastern Europe, uh, but also a lot of uh, benefits in terms of skill set, and uh, there's obviously a cost benefit as well. Uh, our customers are uh, some of them based in, in Texas, Houston, and Austin, um, others in London, and uh, on the West Coast in the US as well. Um, and we provide uh, services um, that you know, are the, beyond the typical suspects, you know, the interfaces, web user interfaces, mobile apps, be it native or um, React native technologies, next to native. Um, so, Livio, uh, Livio, can you that, then, therefore, can you help Pablo Molesko get onto the site very quickly right now? Uh, I'll have to ask you to find a technical company to do that. <laughs> we're we're yeah. going to get there. We're going to get there in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure if you reach out somehow. No, no, I'm joking. They're working on it. He's working on it, right? Um, so, so um, yeah, we, we just pretend we help people sometimes. <laughs> uh, but uh, for most of our customers, what they do is uh, uh, they, they ask for development services, and what we try to achieve is differentiate ourselves by means of uh, applying analytics, uh, mathematics, to try and predict aspects of their data, image processing, what people you know generally call uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence as well. So beyond the mobile apps, the web apps, the all the you know uh, popular. AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure, um, our projects are taking us towards uh, machine learning projects, and that's the way we want to focus on forward. But we can, of course, do other types of uh, projects, data-related Okay, so, uh, Gabi, let me ask you, um, but brother, you're is that Bulgarian? Is that, am I right? Is that Bulgarian? Are you from Bulgaria? The name, Sanikova? No, I'm Slovak. Sorry, 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 <laughs> big, my mistake. Sorry about that. So, no, okay. um, 
Yeah, so tell us a bit more about the Kimberly Clark going forward. Let's say next two or three, four years of challenge, biggest challenges, biggest problems, biggest issues to address. And you know, everyone's asking about the work from work from home question. Um, what is your take on it? Are you going to require people to be back in the office? Can they be working from home forever? And I know it's a kind of almost a boring question, but seem every everyone seems to want to talk about it. What are you guys doing at KC? Well, we also want to talk about it, and we talk about it see, as well <laughs> all the time. Uh, it's it's like a, a, Tom. It's like a million dollar question for me because you know we don't know what we don't know. Yeah, we can always give it a try, and that's why you know we always like to hear another brains how they think about that. Uh, so we are getting ready. We've been working from home since March, middle of March last year. Didn't open up the office yet because at Kimberly Clark we have very strict uh, rules in terms of the safety. Yeah, so uh, we were not opening up uh, the office, but now we are getting ready for office reboot. And it's going to be, you know, uh, I like to use this word because our VPs are saying the same thing. It's, it's going to be gentle because we it's going to be on voluntary basis. Of course, we talk about hybrid. Everybody's talking about hybrid, but I'm not sure whether people want to hear just hybrid. They want to hear hybrid, but meaning that I'm working from home only, yeah, for example. So I think, you know, there are going to be these type of ch the challenges that we will have to face that people kind of don't realize how, um, uh, you know, more time they spend at home, less they feel they need somebody else close to them because they feel much more comfortable. So it's going to be much more psychological aspect of, you know, inviting people and showing them what they are missing without uh, knowing that it's so visible. Yeah. And I think that's going to be happening only when we uh, bring people together. So they are happy about this, you know, physical view, social uh, connection that they didn't have uh, for a very long time. So it's going to be a challenge and it's not going to be easy. Yeah, and I don't know, uh, we need to give it a try and we need to be very agile in our, you know, check and adjust uh, approach. Yeah, so, you know, I do have some expectation that I would like to you know, have uh, my people feeling good about going back to the office, but we will not be forcing, yeah? because we cannot, we don't know how they will behave. And also this, you know, sense of belonging is uh, one of those uh, biggest challenges, right? If you think about my center that we actually, you know, celebrated uh, recently in the beginning of June, three years on the market, out of that one and a half years working from home. <laughs> so if yeah. you think about that, this is how much, this is as much as you can create uh, the, and you still create the culture, but it's different, right? Because it's all remote. So that's going to be a challenge. I think another challenge, which uh, I believe that I, I can very openly say is that um, because of uh, India uh, having uh, its challenges, uh, we see a lot of uh, investors uh, looking for places in the Central Europe rather than, you know, going to India. So we see that there is going to be uh, a number of growing new centers, you know, which is always, you know, for those centers that are already on the market for a certain period of time, it's uh, kind of like providing the, the talent for these new centers. So I expect that attrition will probably go uh, up as well compared to the COVID times, yeah? And I think, you know, it's also, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, we were discussing with my HR business partner and, and she's actually on the on the call as well, Kasia Jancelevich, we were talking about, you know, whether the, the environment here in Poland is actually, you know, progressing as fast as others, uh, you know, uh, industry is progressing, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, whether we have the the right support from the government, whether we have the right studies, you know, to develop the talent, because now the talent will have to, you know, uh, uh, grow in a different uh, uh, pace, you know, and, and if you talk about that analytics, you know, that's where, you know, everybody will be looking at, right? Analytics, agile, you know, having this, um, like a creativity mindset, innovation and so on. So my question is that we need that, but uh, do we have what we need to be able to develop that talent uh, quickly enough on the market as well? So I think that's going to be probably something that we will need to look at. It's going to be a lot about the talent management. When I think about um, uh, different type of services, uh, every, every company is thinking about what else, you know, so 
we definitely will be benchmarking ourselves to uh, uh, hack at benchmarks, right? To order centers, uh, what else they're looking at and what is possible to build and develop. Yeah, so intelligent business service for sure. It's one of, uh, you know, it's our road in our roadmap that we will be looking at. And I think, you know, uh, the way, the way at least you is considered uh, within like a uh, uh, center within the scope of the Kimberly Clark. Um, this business partnering uh, advanced very much, right? Uh, uh, and uh, in it, we are looking at more about what different value we bring to the business about efficient and stable operations. And that's uh, going to be my focus. Uh, this year to support the working capital with the projects uh, to support the additional value creation that we can drive uh, quality and efficiency for the company as well and um, and uh, i think you know it's going to be also very important you know with the, two years ago uh, everybody was thinking about how we can bring all people in one center now people will not be meeting every single day. So it's also about, you know, your location strategy that you will need to think, you know, in terms of the talent pool, where this particular activity or function, it's a place the best. Yeah. So that's what we'll be looking at. Yes. I see that first uh, Shimon Stadnik is on the, on the, on the call, let's say on the session. But uh, let yourself in, Shimon, and share your screens. I'd like to ask you, because you're running a pretty big BPO in Warsaw, and uh, you must have, what, three or 400 people. I'm curious to your perspectives. But you've got to jump, put yourself in there. That would be great. Also, um, while that's going on, uh, leave you. Um, we also have a few guys in from Texas I can see have joined the call. Um, Gabor, the consulate uh, of Hungary in Texas, and Ben Ramirez in Austin um, from WAC Austin. How did you get to bring in U.S. clients, uh, particularly Texas clients? What's the connection there? What was the magic, let's say the magic, whatever, powder that made it work? Sometimes I wonder myself, um, but it's really, uh, we started off the company in uh, 2016, and it was um, its goal at the time, when, Uber and Airbnb for trucks and heavy equipment, and that time I had some uh, partners, few of them in, in California, so we built the system. California being such a regulated state, it was really covering a lot of bases. So when we started, uh, we were really ambitious with that, but it turns out that at some point we kind of sort of sold the capacity towards this other company, um, which mainly wanted to build something fairly similar, but different technology stuff and so on. Um, and hence, I uh, had the opportunity to, to meet the manager at the time of this company. Um, he was really, really reluctant in uh, outsourcing again, uh, some previous experience uh, turning that way. And um, our best story, I guess, uh, he, he himself moved to this other company uh, for some time, and he again turned around towards us directly to, to build a lot of team for him. So I guess it's basically word of mouth to some extent, uh, and uh, we're now trying to invest a little bit more in, in marketing and uh, putting together some proper sales process. But so far we've managed to build a team of around 50 people, and we are going, so we're happy with that. But it was mostly a kind of natural growth. Um, so we are um, looking into construction and logistics you know, right now with the customers in in US. But we've had uh, very interesting, you know, more like uh, startup projects that they wanted to to build. For instance, some um, can't dive into the details, but imagine. Uh, there's this wonder plugin that allows you to turn your shopping session with something that you do uh, online, very engaging with your friends, and that would, you know, seemed a very good idea, and more so the you know, almost mid-pandemic. Uh, and with that project was really nuts because it wasn't, you know, programmers would call it, you know, typically object-oriented programming. We call this trick-oriented programming because all the platforms that have had a lot of uh, you know, uh, limitations that we had to find ways. So, and these are in with that plans was uh, basically, but it's really just based on uh, 
Tom, there is very heavy, heavy uh, noise in the background. Uh, so maybe you need to mute and unmute. Not sure if I can So uh, that's how it happened. Um, and uh, the, the existing customers are really happy with our delivery process. And that's why we are uh, opening up the office uh, that's closer time zone wise to, to the US. So we help. Well, yes. Some of the developers, while we also have some capacity in Canada to avoid any um, potential cultural differences. Uh, but I, I think uh, Simon joined as well. So uh, yeah, Shimon, let's have let's have your perspective. You you guys have what? How many people now in your Warsaw office? Just one second. I just need to. <laughs> Change the location as well because uh, yeah. there yeah. is the parallel. Yeah, yeah. Simon's right next to me. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about work from home, huh? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Technology. Yeah, we go. Um, so yeah. now suddenly everyone works from home, can move from desk to desk. You go to the office. You can no longer right. find, a, find a quiet desk. That's right. That's, that's right. Gonna be fun. But do Shimon, tell us a bit about what you guys are doing. Well, so we basically moving uh, the. Uh, the, the processes from Western Europe, but hopefully also in future from US uh, to Poland. We're utilizing the workforce, professional uh, brain power of, uh, of people in Poland uh, to deliver those processes uh, to the clients uh, abroad. That's uh, what we do. Uh, of course, we utilizing uh, the talent pool, uh, which Dominique even said is amazing here in Poland. Um, uh, engineers, um, uh, accountants, um, uh, marketing, and uh, omnichannel specialists. All this um, uh, talent pool is available here in Poland, so we try to sell it um, to the external uh, Western European and uh, US clients. Right now, we we have 260 people um, here in the Warsaw BPO. We're expanding really fast. Uh, till the end of this year, we're going to have uh, 300 people serving 15 global clients. Those are the uh, large international um, capital groups employing up to 10,000 people worldwide. And the major benefit what we give to the clients is uh, we optimizing the uh, back office uh, cost base um, and we gain them access to, to the talent pool. So that's, uh, that's what we're doing. And, we see increasing demand for um, for professional services being provided from Poland. So uh, we're expanding fast. We're increasing the also the number of clients we, we can serve. So future. Shimon, let me ask you this: We all talked about working from home and not working from home. What? How are you guys managing that issue? So th this is actually. Well, I'm. I'm Right now, I'm amazed how effective we are uh, working from home. So 90% of uh, our office is working from home. We onboarded those five new clients um, almost completely remotely. So even without the travel, um, so that we, we did quite large transitions. Last year, we employed up to now, in the last 12 months, we employed 100 people and all fitted our the culture of um, not the challenges and the problems and I think this um, this success is uh, enabled by our um, so those guys are incredible and um, they, they can motivate the people to work hard even from home so we, we don't see any difference in the quality of the service being provided so our experience uh, working from home is really really positive so we, we, we did not see the drop in uh, uh, not, not only did we did not see the drop in the quality, actually the quality improved, customer satisfaction improved. Uh, we still continue um, improving uh, the, the, the efficiency. So our clients are benefiting strongly from the efficiency gains in the last, um, last year. So it's incredible, actually. I'm not sure how we should come back to the office. Uh, on one hand, everybody is saying that, we, you know, that the company should come back. But on the other hand, it's really hard to find the reason. So 
we outgrew our uh, office capacity by by two. So our office, if we come back to the office, it's it's way too small. So uh, so this is um, our experience. <laughs> I don't know about you. What is your experience? In this regard? Are you going to come back to the office, uh, uh, Liv and Gabriela, or um, you are going to work hybrid in the long term? Simon, hi. Uh, I talked about that already before you joined. So we are actually opening up the office uh, now, 5th of July, on voluntary basis. And yes, we are thinking about hybrid because uh, even though that we have quite large office, we are already above the, the normal capacity. So we would have to use hot desking anyway, right? But that's the beauty of uh, this environment, right? That people feel much more comfortable you know, working from home. So look, you can, as you were saying, you know, we can add more people and still, you know, manage the office space uh, as you have, right? So obviously, you know, my office space was already, you know, agreed, confirmed before <laughs> COVID happened, right? So I have the office space, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, si uh, Simon, I think, you know, I would love to see people in the office. I am that type of person that uh, I believe that uh, people interaction is very important well-being you know, and for the work-life balance as well. Because I think, you know, one of the things that other people struggle, uh, it's that they just are not able to distinguish between the, between the professional and, you know, uh, uh, personal lives uh, so much, right? So when you go to the office, it's much easier to separate. So, um, but, you know, I think it, we will, it will be hybrid. Yeah, so we will definitely uh, give people flexibility you know, in the uh, for their work, and we will definitely not require people to come back to the office every single day. That's not the plan. Yeah, but we would like to encourage them to come to co come to collab collaborate, right? So I think that's probably the main purpose for people to feel as a team. You know, sense of belonging. You know, that's uh, that's what I believe. It's very important to the All company right, we got, as well. Yeah. Hey, so pa we got Pavel on. Great. Thanks for being persistent there. Right. Right on. Cool. Good, good afternoon, everyone. It's it took a while. Yeah, it was quite a challenge, but yeah, I, I'm we, here. So glad great, to, glad great. To well, 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 Pavel, you must be the newest SSC in the region. Certainly, one of the most important ones in Krakow, maybe in all of all of Poland right now, uh, PepsiCo. But tell us a bit about um, what you guys have done. Not everyone knows what you're doing there. Um, a little bit of your journey, and you guys got started just as the uh, epidemic hit, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, happy to, to say a few words about the PepsiCo journey within the, the GBS. Yeah, so, so first of all, it's relatively late when PepsiCo onboarded into such a big transformational project as, as, as the GBS. And previously, there were a number of initiatives. So, so it's not entirely new. PepsiCo was active in terms of a number of sourcing initiatives, but they were more either in-country or regional or yeah, involving third parties. But it was yeah, two years ago, more or less, when PepsiCo decided to onboard into the really broad transformational GBS program. So uh, here in Krakow, I'm just a yeah, part of the, of the, of the big uh, story. Yeah? So, so it's happening right now everywhere on the globe. And there are currently five global hubs uh, defined. Yeah? So Krakow in Poland being one of them. Another one is in Russia, in a city called Voronezh, uh, Cairo in Egypt, uh, Mexico City, and Hyderabad in, in India. Yeah? So that's the, currently it's, uh, there are five global hubs uh, at, at PepsiCo. And as I said, the yeah, transition is happening, uh, happening everywhere. And the migration is, is happening everywhere. Mm, it's interesting scope, yeah, because uh, that's that's something which yeah, we attacked already a number of business areas. So it's not just concentrated around the one or, or two functions. So it covers currently six different functions. So it, it's IT, it's HR, it's marketing, it's financial planning, it's uh, the, the accounting scope so so as you can see it's uh, it's really uh, really wide area which is great yeah because it gives people a lot of opportunity for growth yeah, different uh, talent pool different skills that, that we bring into into the organization so that's really on one hand it's it's really challenging on the other hand it's uh, it's really very rewarding for people for their careers for for their, their development so so it's it's great 
just to give you a flavor, we are now in the in the project. We still call it as a beginning, but it's already approximately 400 people in in Krakow after more or less a year and a half. Yeah, so it's it's growing quite nicely uh, around the globe in the whole PBS program. It's it's already around 10,000 people. Yeah, so so that's that's really quite uh, quite fast pace of of change that we are uh, that we are experiencing here. But yeah, as I said, yeah, for me, I, I just yeah, still see it as a as a beginning. And yeah, definitely, we are we are right in the center of the of the big transformation of the big change, and uh, it's it, it's happening as as we speak. So yeah, I think uh, in, in the few words that would be the, my uh, uh, my short story. So yeah, happy to take any questions if you have any. <clears throat> I, can I ask you, Pavel, how, because as I understand, you, you onboarded 400 people in the last one and a half years. Is that correct? That's, that's correct, yes. So most of, of the onboarding took place during the COVID. And I just wanted to ask, how did you make sure, I mean, was it virtual? Was it um, in the office? And uh, how did you, because this is really amazing. I mean, it's a huge number even to recruit. and. Uh, can you give us a secret or tell us the secret? How did you manage to do this virtually <laughs> and that the guys deliver the, yeah, the quality happy, service? Happy, happy to share the story. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, we, I even calculated the ratio recently. It's 85 people who were onboarded fully virtually, who haven't seen the office even. Yeah. So it's it's been a challenge. It's constantly a challenge. Uh, and I must say, it was yeah, one of the of the probably the brightest stories because we demonstrated to be so agile, so so flexible. So it was overnight in March 19, yeah, when we had to, uh, sorry, March 20, when we had to switch to to the to the virtual manner. So we switch everything. Yes, we switch uh, recruitment, we switch onboarding, we switch uh, our transitions. And that was a big experiment, yeah, because yeah, previously many people said, no, no, the transition, for instance, it needs to be face to face, it needs to be on site, yeah, people need to spend time together, et cetera, et cetera. Otherwise, it's not possible. So we have, we demonstrated, although it's not ideal sometimes, it is possible. Yeah, it's possible, it works, it works pretty well. After this year, more or less, yeah, what I can say as a, my big concern is that, yeah, it's difficult to build this yeah, bond, this the, uh, sense of belonging to the organization, this yeah, team spirit in, in the virtual manner. Yeah? So obviously we try it in different ways. Yeah? We organize various online events, yeah? more formal, less formal, purely entertainment yeah, related, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's not everything. Yeah? We, I realize it's not everything. So I'm really looking forward toward the day that I will be uh, all, uh, able to reopen the office. And by the way, we are gradually reopening. Yeah? So currently I allow the, uh, around 10% of the maximum capacity. Uh, so I can see already see people coming to the office, meeting each other with that, within the team, etc. Although it's still limited. Yeah, But I'm sure it will come. It will come uh, over the next year, hopefully weeks, if, if not months. Yeah, we see a few guys join in from the U.S. I can see Ben Ramirez from Texas and Jujana from Houston, uh, Gabor, also Texas. If you guys will put yourself on the screen, you have to top right, you'll just let yourself in. We'd love to hear from your perspective. Or maybe Irina from uh, Belarus as well. I see you there from IBA. Please join us uh, on, on the screen. I'm going to put myself back on mute because I'm in the background too loud. But uh, let someone else say a couple of words. Uh, friend, friend, quick question for you, Paolo. What was the hardest thing to do as you grew to, you know, 400? I understand that's just the beginning, but still, uh, what's the worst memory you have there? <laughs> worst memory? Well, maybe, yeah, one of the biggest challenges for us is that we are mostly concentrating on, on the European scopes, yeah? And the European scopes means a lot of, first of all, fragmentation in terms of the scope, yeah? You know how Europe is... Uh, 
<laughs> is is divided. So so it's really we are transferring the work from several countries, and also this fragmentation is reflected in the number of languages that we are sourcing, which which is also a big challenge. Yeah, currently. Within this year, 400 staff I have, which is amazing, 22 nationalities and 12 languages. Yeah, so so that's a mosaic. Yeah, that's a really mosaic, very diverse environment, which is great on one hand. That's 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 really a power of diversity. On the other hand, yeah, from it's it's a big challenge from the recruitment perspective, from the retention perspective. Yeah, so so this fragmentation, which which also yeah. Uh, is, is, is manifested also to some extent by uh, different yeah, languages which, which are necessary for service delivery. In Romania, we've noticed that um, a number of you know, larger companies with you know, hundreds and thousands of people employed, well, mostly programmers perhaps, but um, what they would do, they would have a tendency to open smaller offices in smaller cities, maybe. So I wonder, um, what's the benefit of getting all these people together in a single center, um, whereas perhaps smaller centers in their you know, local countries could have helped with the, I don't know, the, the language, the culture, or operationally that, that would have not been possible? Yeah, this, this is a very valid point and very valid discussion. We are having these discussions right now in, uh, in, in the company and uh, it's right yeah it may lead to the to the change yeah so so yeah for for time being we assume yeah, that the work should be happening in hub uh, it that we should be all we are physically present in hub yeah but yeah there are different models which are being contemplated right now that's that's true yeah so yeah i i also yeah talk to my colleagues as as you said from from the industry and i say well a lot change, yeah, and, and and a lot of the models which were not accepted before, they, they are now at least contemplated, if not implemented. Yeah, I think Livio, you, you know, this is happening in uh, in uh, most of the big uh, shared services, right? You know, this type of questions is discussed. Uh, you know, as I touched on a little bit before, the location strategy is becoming very different in the type of. Uh, uh, and also, you know, I, uh, you know, at Kimberly Clark, we are not still going direction, but I know some of the companies are thinking about B2B contracts as well. Yeah, instead of having their own uh, offices, you know, spread across Europe uh, to have different type of uh, relationship. So, yeah, I, I agree with Pavel that uh, now uh, there are so many options that you need to take into consideration to decide what's the best uh, for your company that, but, you know, at least options are there. It's always good to have an option than not to have any option, right? So. We've never really shared since that we started off being on, online, but with, with the, the pandemic, just, you know, uh, getting everyone online then that levels the LinkedIn perhaps. In terms of uh, finding people and, and identifying them on a, on a wider you know, space, for instance, we have one of our partners there they're looking at us to help them set up their kind of sort of virtual hub, but they want everyone to be able to work remotely. Uh, whereas there are cult cultural differences, people still need to have some office to refer to maybe. Uh, and uh, or this thing that they can get there whenever they need to. Um, and there's different perhaps uh, laws applied in different countries and uh, they come in from the US and they have some level of expectation that these things are perhaps easier sometimes. It's a work in progress. Yeah, I think, I, oh, I think, uh, it, please. No, I just wanted to, because Katarzyna is also with us, and um, I, I just wanted to ask if uh, she could also share with us um, some of her experience um, regarding the, the COVID um, working remotely and uh, Thank how you. you guys managing. Thank you. My experience time. is is very similar to Gabriela because we are coming from same company from Kimberly Clark at, at Krakow. This what I will add to the. Um, hybrid model, uh, the question uh, you ask around the big hubs in the big cities. 
uh, of course, from the corporate perspective, it's a bit different than from the employee's perspective. Yes, my own experience is the key attitude for us to uh, retain best people is to show them how they can grow and having uh, small hubs, uh, not well uh, experienced by people what the other people are doing is a struggle therefore for retain. That's my own observation. And secondly, also the recent data shows that even we were able to wake up in a new reality and switch off for remote work uh, from one day to another, as Gabriela mentioned, we onboarded la from March last year till uh, uh, December 2020, we onboard 130 people virtually only, delivering two days of onboarding extensive program. And it was possible, yes, but the data shows that to make people uh, working, allow them to work together, they are much more, uh, they have more initiatives they are much uh, more um, independently thinking about some out-of-box solution. And that's why right now we're trying to find the best uh, compromise between being open and voluntary open the office, but on the other hand, encourage people to back to the office because we wanted them to, me to team up. We wanted them to think about the processes. We wanted them to think about the future um, deliveries we are offering and as a center. And uh, since we, um, since last year, when we went uh, remote, uh, moved to Krakow, some um, big uh, uh, unstandardized, I would uh, say, for this type of centers, businesses, for example, chemical research team, uh, refers um, uh, a first uh, regulatory function, and, and so on and so on. We want people to back to the office, to to and know each other about new functions and to show them how many other opportunities they have to grow and to stay within the same organization. So that would be my key observation from the pandemic time and the, the, the near future when we need to find the, the balance, as I mentioned, be, between working from home and uh, be voluntary at the office to team up, to, to work together. Thank you. Have you have you already decided yeah, post COVID yeah what model you will adopt yeah in terms of yeah working from yeah, home? Yeah, we did. Yeah, okay. yeah, we are, we are going for hybrid model. Mm -hmm. So okay. partly from office, partly from home. Um, depends very much from the function and the business need. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be left for the team discretion or it's, it will be more predefined? So team X needs to be in the office two days, team Y three days, whatever the pattern is. Good question. We, by definition, we decide uh, two to three days, mm -hmm. but uh, the decision we want to leave on the leader level because the leader knows best team and the business needs as well. Yeah. I As I mentioned to... uh, in the uh -huh. beginning, Pavel, it's going to be like a gentle invitation for people to come to the office. That's going to be our original <laughs> approach. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I, that's a good expression, yeah. I would have a question to, to all of you guys based on what Katarzyna said. And um, I agree with her in the, the experience that, uh, that people are motivated and uh, when they have the opportunities to grow within the company. And, um, when a company or shared service center can grow, uh, this is great. But uh, what about the shared service centers which have the limit of their growth? Like, uh, you know, they, they, they're going to be 50, 70, 100 people um, office or a, a group, and that's it. And, they, you know, they, they're just limited by the scale of, of uh, the, the internal client they, they serve to. And... Those competition with your centers, which are so big, or there is another way to manage and motivate the people and keep the, the you know the, the rotation low. Because just to share the experience, I actually I was in the same position. I was uh, creating a shared service center for Taliwile, and I saw that there are limits for growth. Having such a great people on board. We just decided to, 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 to become a BPO and actually to sell the shared service center to the BPO. And right now we can, again, be on the, this growth path um, 
um, and generating the, the, the growth opportunities for our guys. So I, I just was wondering what is your opinion about the subject? So if I can start, because uh, I have experience for really small uh, GBS center uh, in the world. Yes, uh, uh, the, the, there is a Bain and Company GBS center where we had uh, at the time I was working uh, and leading HR the, around 120 people. And the prediction for the growth by definition is not big because that's the consulting company, there is no need to create a, a huge hub in one of the city anywhere. Yeah? So by definition, they will not grow up to, I think, 200 uh, uh, FTEs uh, in the next uh, five years. But this which allows uh, um, this uh, to, to retain people was, to, was the, how the culture was created. And I think that apart from the culture uh, and the uh, the sense of belonging, the very specific climate uh, the company built for the employees that make uh, people uh, happy with the job and not necessarily so easily uh, consider an opportunities. And this is also why, uh, as Ma Gabriela mentioned, we are looking about a uh, sense of belonging. Yes, because a part of the possibilities we can create as a big center in Krakow Still, Krakow is the most competitive one in Poland, much more competitive than Warsaw. Yes, uh, the, the, the biggest uh, hubs are concentrated here. The biggest growth is PepsiCo, yes, which uh, starts operate, operate two, year, two years ago. Yes, uh, we did not have such a big hub, for example, in any other uh, big cities in Poland. So first, the, the, the possibilities. But if this is not the case because of the size of the uh, center, therefore the culture something which make the job completely different than all other competitors and dedicate the job uh, for those people who are treating those this kind of position as a lifestyle uh, rather than career i have a question because obviously you know your question is looking at perhaps adding more opportunities into larger centers which we perhaps will one day become, because everyone on this call says we're going to grow, there's an infinite amount of people available, awesome. Now, um, you know, you could look at a tank, it's like, you know, very stable, goes wherever it wants to go, and then you can you look at a you know, small bike, maybe a bicycle. You wonder yourself, who's going to make circles around who easier? So being flexible and agile, helps with the decision process. And I myself have worked with, you know, in, in various types of companies, very large ones as well. And the, you know, question I'd have, which affects everyone from low management, to, you know, to even impacts the, the you know, bottom up kind of numbers, attrition and whatnot. So how many people uh, in your company have to approve salary increases and how easy is that? Because um, I ended up at some point working with a company which actually had several layers. I didn't know at the time and was surprised that I got caught in the middle because I was managing this, this, this team. Whereas in a smaller shop with a very different structure, things can happen quite differently. And it really depends on the kind of people you want to attract um, and the kind of services you want to provide, um, and, you know, the speed at which you want to be able to adjust. So I don't think there's a one size fits all, but it's uh, definitely a matter of culture. Um, so you see the larger companies look at, we need to have people feel like they belong. Well, in a smaller company that's able to keep the, the culture, they already belong. There's not even a question. So I'm not sure if that helps Simon, but that's yeah. the, the option of someone small. Yeah, <laughs> no, because I was thinking about, uh, uh, Shimon, your question, because it's a tough question, right? Because people, you know, most of the times people are driven by money, uh, completely agree with you, Livio, by, uh, uh, by uh, growth and, uh, you know, uh, also what I mentioned, like a lifestyle, right? Lifestyle rather than a job, yeah? But then, you know, if you think about how many GBS environment type of lifestyle 
positions, and I'm looking at Pavel, we can offer, right? You know, uh, most of them are heavy operational roles that have, you know, defined KPIs and so on. So I think, you know, uh, to to the question when the center has no opportunity to grow, and uh, it really depends on what type of position you have it in that center, right? If the center is purely transactional, basic, uh, then you know I, I guess it's going to be much harder to keep people, right? Okay. Because you know this is as much flexibility as you have, yeah. But uh, you know I think you know there are so many different as aspects that uh, uh, you know. Uh, needs to be taken into consideration because grow is definitely one of the top priorities of people, young people, uh, uh, especially, yeah, so. I agree with you, Gabriela, and I, I think uh, one of the key parameters uh, answering this question is uh, what sort of processes you have. Is it more transactional or is it the yeah, high uh, in, in terms of complexity, added value, etc.? Yeah, if this is a yeah, more high end, then it's it's more possible that you will retain people for the longer period yeah because there are also it depends very much on personalities yes there are some people who are quite looking forward towards stability they want they're having same job for for a long period of time etc yeah you, you can find yeah, quite quite many people uh, who are like this and there are some people who are yeah, looking for constantly more challenges etc and these will be by definition yeah, probably possibly quite uh, difficult to, to retain unless you have yeah, opportunities internally within the organization to uh, to promote them yeah so so very very much depends but i think yeah the, the more transactional the job is the more you you need to accept the fact that you you will have certain rotation yeah so it's then just the <laughs> your operational management, how to make sure that, that it, it doesn't derail your operations, that you treat it uh, this a certain level of attrition as a, as a business as usual. And it also can be driven by age groups, you see, uh, Shimon, because, yeah. you know, Pavel was talking about the languages, right? Because, you know, and, and in my organization, we have also a lot of nationalities, a lot of languages as well. So even if you want to look at the, the age group of, you know, for example, my age and above, right, where people look for more stability, you know, to, you know, have the work-life balance and the families and so on, you know, within that group, uh, the the experience with the languages is not so high, yeah? So I think, you know, as we will be, you know, moving more, right, uh, the, these, uh, the, the group of people that will be attracted for certain positions will change. Now, because we need to manage a lot of languages, we, most of us, we have young people, and young people look for the growth all the time, right? But as you go, you know, Further. That's what I expect to be the trend, you know, going forward, right? That, you know, people will become more stable because they will reach certain age that it, by nature, it's expecting a little bit more stability. But, you know, I'm not uh, the wizard here, but that's what I think, you know, may possibly happen as well. Let me let me jump in for a second. And I see that Sarunas from Sitco Vilnius is in the, in the room, let's say, but not put yourself on. So Sarunas, if you put yourself into the uh, allow yourself in top right, um, you know, admit yourself in, that would be great. There you go. Good. So let's have you uh, give your sort of uh, overview. And by the way, formally, officially, we're supposed to finish this at three o'clock, but I tell you what, I'm going to go off the screen and we'll keep it going for 15 minutes more. Good conversation. I'll leave the floor to you guys to self-manage. Sarunas, give us, your, give us a background on what you're doing with your new job. Um, and I'm going to go back to the main stage. So uh, thank you guys all. Enjoy the rest of the next 15 minutes. I'm out. You're, you're on mute. <laughs> that is the new buzzword. You are on the mute. He's on mute. <laughs> we will try to unmute you. Let me, I, I, you should be, let me try to unmute. It's not working. Should be an app where you can leap some. <laughs> yeah, you see, you sometimes we like. You, <laughs> you know, the leap three D. That's a good one. Today. <laughs> sometimes I find myself that uh, the team is speaking. My role is not anymore to be into the details. 
Uh, so sometimes I just want to jump in and you know, provide some pretend I work or something. And they just look at me and say, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a mute. And we lost him. We lost him. Yeah. It probably does. He's dying back. Sometimes there's issues. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, okay. uh, Pavel had a lot of problems in the beginning, but he managed through, right, Pavel, <laughs> to get in. Oh, uh, yeah. It was, yeah. It was yeah, just one click. Yeah, obviously there was yeah, some functions which blocked my both microphone and the camera. So yeah, if you knew where to click, it was easy. Yeah. It would be easy, yeah. So you, yeah, if you're hearing us, Sarunas, you probably yeah. want to allow the microphone. We're not hearing you. No, we but cannot you hear open, you. Yeah. You want to close the browser, open it again. Dive into the system, and it will it should ask you if you allow the microphone. Perhaps that's the issue. And then look at the interface. My one on me. <laughs> Actually, we don't need. Sorry. Shimon, by the way, are you in Warsaw physically? Yes, I'm. I'm right now I'm participating in in the conference uh, conference live. So uh, two two times uh, Pfizer. So I'm. Um, <laughs> you good? I'm quite ready. Yeah, I'm good. I'm I'm able to to network, which is really cool and lovely. Today yes. early morning, I had my second yeah. shot. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> yes, thank you. And actually, it's a, it's a really cool venue. This is Elektrownia uh, Powiśle. Uh, so I, I think they just opened during the pandemic, and uh, yeah. But, yeah, beautiful but, uh, area, beautiful building. That's very true. Yeah, so Tom Tom really chosen the chosen the right place. How many oh. how many people are attending Shimon uh, in the conference? Probably he did not hear you. Yeah, I, I think so. Probably. So I was wondering, um, you know, we were talking about going hybrid and can't really feel the difference anymore, but because uh, we've been doing this since, since before pandemic, but we've noticed reference, and I've spoken to, to other people as well, and they kind of confirmed saying that um, people, more senior people, uh, would perhaps have a, a tendency to prefer working from home more so than, uh, you know, uh, people within one, two, three years uh, of experience. And that's basically focused on programmers who have much more freedom, perhaps. You know, they, they can really work from anywhere easily. Um, so I'm not sure if that's your experience as well, your, your data looking at people wanting to return to the office or not. Uh, does it, is it any, in any way sensible to, to the number of years of experience of those people we are asking? The way I, I look at it, at least, it's more driven by yeah, individuals' personalities. Yeah? There, there are some people who are definitely yeah, they, they would like to, to feel together. Yeah, this togetherness is, is something very important for them, etc. And there are some people who feel just okay yeah, being, being remotely and, and don't have that uh, intensive interaction. So, so in my view, it's more personality rather than generation because I can see in mm. both yeah, younger generation, older generation, everywhere pretty much. But yeah, it, I, I could be wrong as well. <laughs> it's, it's just my observation. Yeah, I'm desperate to go back to the office review. <laughs> <laughs> Same here, I'm in the office. Yeah, because I'm nobody desperate. Else is. <laughs> I will add to this that probably also commuting to office make the uh, key point under the decision because yes, uh, Krakow right. specific is yeah. that not necessarily all the people are located in Krakow. There is a lot of people who are uh, living around and Krakow is not so easy city to commute to the to the parts where the centers are located so those who experience how great it is to wake up 30 minutes later and avoid the, the traffic uh, or traffic back uh, probably are not so uh, sure but this is what we are hearing comparing to uh, to last year because we had the ambition to open the office uh, um, in the middle of the summer unfortunately the the, the number of cases stop us from this 
uh, there are people who want to buy. Yes, they want to buy for very different reasons uh, to team up to have some focus time also yes not necessarily all people have uh, uh, the, the space uh, in the apartment to focus enough uh, so so it's very different and i will not link this uh, necessarily with uh, the generation yeah. I, don't I think know. You, were, you were talking about the experience so. right you were talking about the number of years you know with the company i guess yeah yeah some of them they have kids they buy this house they don't want to do the yeah. commute so they're obviously in the we have a lot of uh, yeah. yeah we have a lot they, of they... moms and men and dads like heroes you know i call <laughs> them like a hero group honestly to manage family small kids still work you know honestly unbelievable and then, then there's a need that we always had um so we were able to operate the office no problem um and we wanted to get somebody on board this. so we said okay listen you can work from anywhere really provided that you respect the you know the rules for security and everything else but we wanted that the probation period to allow them to interact with the more senior people who were already kind of adjusted to working remotely more than uh, being in the office so we really let that to to, to the individual scrum teams really to, to manage and assemble but on the other hand I'm quite surprised that some of the technology companies would look at it as a potential issue because all these companies, they basically provide their services remotely and online, or so if they're in you know, Eastern Europe or wherever they are. Uh, so they already have the, the notion and the capability. And, 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 uh, but then again, there's a lot of services where not, that are not you know, programming, so definitely that's much, much harder to provide, I'm sure. Uh, I was really interested to, to, to see how uh, those kind of services would be able to be provided remotely and have such a level of complexity of being assembled. So having to have your you know, employees um, in office. Yeah, also my observation is yeah, just being a few office recently that yeah you really need to have the reason to be in the office yeah because yeah once i was in the office and i just yeah, uh, shoot yeah five zoom calls and yeah there was no one around me and i said no it doesn't make sense yeah it's the same zoom call as which i'm doing from home yeah so it really needs to be yeah either team meeting or yeah some yeah kind of a brainstorming session or yeah, some sort of in interaction workshop, whatever it is. But yeah, when I think about it, yeah, even post-COVID, yeah, I think it will evolve into this direction. Just to do the normal job, it, it, you, you don't have to be in the office unless you don't have the, the right conditions, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, as, 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 uh, as you rightly discussed, yeah, there are a number of factors to, to consider. But yeah, normally, I think it would needs to be a tailor to what, what you are going to do in the, in the office. So how do you measure results? Because obviously measuring time doesn't help anymore. Um, we typically in, in you know, the development team are going for Scrum. So there's you know, something that they estimate to deliver, everything's fine. Um, but there's other companies who have to be, you know, more creative about coming up with with various metrics that you know don't put a lot of pressure on, on the on the employees so i wonder what's the hardest metric you guys have found in your various services you're providing to to come up with to compensate for the lack of you know uh, direct interaction or presence in the office shall i start first <laughs> we didn't come up with specific kpi and measurement you know, in the beginning, people were talking about, oh, we need to install a program to see that people are really working. You know, at Kimberly Clark, we don't do things this way. Yeah. So we just continue with our KPIs. We continue work on the, working on projects uh, as we did before. And, uh, you know, obviously, we give people flexibility, a lot of flexibility. Yeah. So if you have kids at home and first, you know, in the morning, you need to focus on getting your kids, you know, bed ready give the food and so on we were okay for people to have slots you know to work just to get uh, the job done so we didn't actually include any additional kpis into our operation only because of the COVID. 
Because we were including business KPIs, how to protect your accounts receivable balance, right? You know, uh, how to make sure that, you know, when we talk to suppliers, how to observe, you know, the uh, what is happening on the market and so on, business additional, but not really on the productivity, uh, from the productivity perspective. And we didn't have to, right? People, I think I was talking about that people were working very well, very well. Uh, from the office, uh, you know, surprisingly well. Everybody was very surprised, right? So I guess, you know, our reply was like, you know, we give you flexibility to get the job done, you know, as we were doing before. So that's it. And I can I can say pretty much the same here. A lot is uh, based on trust, yeah, and then uh, this yeah, trusting relationship between your uh, employer, employee, etc. So, yeah, KPIs wise, yeah, we we just run the same set of KPIs as we, as we did before, yeah, business wise, yeah. So so it's no change, and obviously people need to deliver against these KPIs. That's that's clear, but yeah, in terms of yeah, more, yeah controlling people, yeah, uh, analyzing yeah what time they spend on on which activity now we we don't do it yeah we we take it yeah, as a yeah, more flexible manner also having in mind yeah, a certain understanding yeah because yeah working remotely it's also a certain challenge and and uh, certain handicap yeah so it's tiring it's causing fatigue it's uh, it's it's not the same so i really don't mind if someone here yeah, ends their yeah, normal duties yeah, an hour earlier and yeah just rests that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, people need it really as well. And yeah, there is a certain risk. It will be abused here and there. But yeah, again, yeah, there, there are a set of uh, normal business parameters that we need to meet anyway. And uh, so I think this risk is, is really limited. Your story pre COVID, I remember, I think the, one of the famous one was Yahoo. So they had this lady running the show and uh, they let them, okay, you can work remotely, no problem. And then turns out they have serious issues with their you know, stock valuation and whatnot, performance really. And then say, okay, tomorrow you're all coming to work. Um, didn't really help, I think, but uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's the level of trust and the way you, you disseminate that for an organization, the more layer it has, the more, you know, potential risks, I guess. So, you know. Okay, I guess, you know, Sarunas, we will not be able to hear you. <laughs> Looks like it's just going <laughs> to get through. <laughs> next, next time, yeah. <laughs> but I yeah, believe so that was, we are close to, yeah. Close to finish, yeah, I, I think so. Yep. So, so we can then perhaps move to, to the networking event. I'm not sure yes, what the thank you timing for the that discussion. is. It was really nice to meet you around the table and have the small discussion. So it was a pleasure to, to meet you. Thank you. And likewise, yeah, it was it was great talking to you. Yeah. Right. Okay. See, See you, you later. Later. Bye. 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 <laughs>